was taking a gander around Sephora yesterday and I came across the Love Fest Obsessions eyeshadow palette from Huda Beauty and I had to pick it up to review for you guys. If you're new here, I review a lot of products that Huda Beauty comes out with so I couldn't resist this one. Now it looks like right now the only item from the Love Fest collection is this eyeshadow palette but if you go to the Huda Beauty website, there's a bunch of other things from the Love Fest collection on her website so the Kaoli Love Fest Burning Cherry Perfume, I believe that is also available at Sephora, but it's also available on Huda Beauty's website as well. I really like the Kaoli fragrances, though I don't buy too many fragrances. I'm very picky about what I buy, so I didn't pick that up. Online and not at Sephora are the Love Fest Cream Blushes, so there are two shades. These are very tempting to me. They're kind of expensive. They're $39. I'm interested, but because they didn't come to Sephora, I don't think I will end up ordering these. I don't need any more cream blushes, but if they were at Sephora, I definitely would have picked them up. There also is a Love Fest Lip Quad. It looks like, are they the same shades? I don't know. It says you can tear and share. How cute. Uh, and then a Love Fest Legit Lashes 2-in-1 Mascara, and I think that's the main stuff. There also is an eyeliner, but anyways, if you're like me, you're probably the most excited about the eyeshadow, so let's get into it. So this is one of Huda Beauty's affordable smaller eyeshadow palettes. It's $29 and she has come out with so many obsessions palettes and typically they tend to not be the best quality but sometimes they can be hit or miss so that's why I wanted to review this so it comes in the same kind of normal clear plastic covering and the packaging is very neat as Huda Beauty normally is it's like that holographic scratchy texture and then you can see different angles. It moves around very, very neat. I think they do a really great job with this. The palette itself is made in China. Her normal bigger palettes are made in Italy. So I do typically notice a difference in the quality between the Italian palettes and the Ch palettes made in China. 24 month shelf life. So let's go ahead and open her up. There are nine eyeshadows in here. We have six mattes. So it is a palette that's heavy on the mattes. One metallic marble and then two crush flake metallics. It looks like the crush flake metallics are a new formula and the metallic marble is a new formula. Though I do feel like I've seen both of the new formulas from Huda Beauty already, but these must be reformulated. Let's get into it. Let's swatch these. Taking a closer look at the color story with the lights down, this is a very Huda Beauty color story. She really loves oranges and purples, and you'll see that when we get to comparisons of other palettes, but this is not a new, exciting, or unique formula from Huda Beauty. However, I do love the combo of orange and purple, so I'm still into it. So let's go ahead and we're gonna swatch the top two velvety mattes, and then the metallic marble. Okay, so that's the two mattes. This is the new metallic marble. And so I do believe like she does have this formula. So it is a little bit more shimmery and has a little bit more punch. In other shades in the past with the marble finish, they weren't quite as shiny and definitely did not have the pigment that this has. So that's really good. I'm liking this so far. We have a lighter orange peachy shade and here is the first crushed flake metallic. So you can see it's not as flaky as it sounds, which I think is nice. It makes it less messy. And then here is the second Crushed Flake Metallic, again very gorgeous. And then the final two mattes. So the mattes swatched pretty buttery. You can see this shade and this shade. The darkest shades aren't the most pigmented. I will say I do find that they swatch smoother than Huda Beauty's mattes and other palettes because a lot of times you'll find that the mattes get stuck and they don't really drag out. So we'll see how these apply on the lid, but I think everything swatched beautifully. I can't see any duds thus far. So let's put it on the eyeballs. Quickly gonna do one eye and I'll be right back. All right, so I played around with one eye. Let's get into the other one. I have the Ulta Matte Eye Primer on my eyelid. And one of my major concerns about this palette initially looking at it is there's a lot of different matte shades of orange. I just felt like I didn't know that all of these orange shades were necessary with it only being nine pans. Maybe we could have gotten more versatility and more different looks. But let me show you. I'm gonna start off with this shade right here. I'm using a BK Beauty A503, which is the collaboration with Angie Hot and Flashy. So this shade instantly gives you a lot more color than you would expect. It's brighter, it's blending on beautifully. 
I can tell you now, the mattes in this palette are so scrumptious, delicious, and I wanted to see how it differed from the pink shade. I always say this in my videos, but if you happen to be new here, I don't necessarily go for prettiest looks. This first round, I am normally just seeing how colors look next to each other, if they blend into one another, things like that. You can see it's slightly more pink, but again, I feel like while the undertones are different, I would have preferred this to have been like a really light matte pink pink because they blend out to kind of look the same. Especially if you put a brown out here and it'll neutralize the pink even more, it'll look even more like this shade. And then I wanted to see how this bright orange did right here, so let's take a look. Just pressing it on the outer part of the eyelid. Again, a little deeper than this first shade that we applied and definitely has more brightness. And I'm packing it on with a blending brush. And do you see the pigment that we're getting from it? Very little fallout. Beautiful shade and it's instantly our already washed out the pink, so I think that this pink shade, mm, not the most necessary, but it's very good quality, so I'm not gonna fault that. So we're a little bit bright, I wanted to tone that down, and again, just for reviewer's sake, we're taking this orange shade, putting it in the outer corner, and we're seeing how that differed. It's a little bit deeper, they're gonna blend into one another, but they are different, so you can get a really great orange kind of gradient look with ease, very, very good quality. And my eye is very, very burnt orange. I'm gonna go ahead and layer some of the oranges along the lower lash line. I don't need to think too hard about it because most of the colors in the lower lash line, more depth will be brought in later. So we just kind of need an orange hue underneath. And then we're gonna go in with this shade right here. This blend though was so stinking good. If you struggle with blending, you're not going to with this palette. Let's go ahead and dip into the deeper shades. So we're gonna start off with this shade right here. I'm gonna start it off on my lower lash line and then build this out in the outer corner. Very nice shade here. Kind of bring it inwards. I'm using a lot of depth in today's look, so I'm carrying the depth pretty far in. So this is a really nice shade. It's the perfect deepening shade to this orange look. Gosh, and with this palette, you can get such a pretty dimensional all matte look which is gorgeous for the summer. So I highly recommend you give that a try if you pick up this palette. And then finally, with a Wingoss 20 brush, we're going into this really dark kind of plum shade. And this is going to pull lid shades together. This doesn't pull as dark as I would like it to, but it's still a very good shade. And one thing that I've learned from Huda Beauty palettes in the past, when they put a shade in like this, Normally it's a little harder to blend, not in today's case. Even though I would say it's not as deep as I was hoping, I don't care because it blends itself. It is such a high quality matte. So I am really impressed with the mattes in this palette. I think they are very blendable, very high quality. So you're not gonna struggle with that. Next, let's hop into this new marbled metallic shade. Um, I pretty much layered over it. I wanted more with the eye look, but I just wanted to show you what it would look like. And I'm just putting it all over as a base shade. It pulls a little deeper than I anticipated. And it's it's a shimmer formula. It's not a weak shimmer, but it's not metallic. I'll tell you that. You can see right here, it's fine. I'm not in love with it. It looks cooler in the pan than it does when applied to the eyelid, but it's more pigmented than the marble shades that I've dealt with from Huda Beauty in the past. So I think they've definitely amped up the quality on that. And it's a pretty shade. I'm just not in love with it because we have these flake chroma flake shades so let's go ahead and do that i'm gonna use the lighter shade right here and i'm just gonna pop it right on top on the inner half of the eyelid. So the marbled shade actually acted as a really great base for these purple shades. And this just looks incredible on the eyelid. They apply best with the finger. That's also what Huda herself recommends for this formula. Very nice. I mean, I don't think it's anything that really stands out from the Huda Beauty shimmers because she's always had really good quality shimmers, but it's right on par with those really good quality metallic shades. And we're gonna get this shade right here, which can be hard to formulate for some brands, but I think they did a great job with this. So I mean, we are nine for nine shades here. All of them are really beautiful. I will say with these flaky shades, you do get a little bit of fallout. So maybe apply your face makeup after. Nothing crazy. I don't know. It's even hard to see. It's just a little bit of fallout, but just be prepared for the flake shades to give it to you. But honestly, they wipe off easily with a brush. I'm going to go in with the darkest matte shade now and just kind of smoke the look out a little bit. I 
love the look of like a burnt orange eye with purples incorporated and so does Huda you'll see because she has a lot of palettes that kind of give that effect but I do want to smoke this out blend it out a little bit maybe you can't see but there's some fallout collecting that's okay we're gonna leave it and I'm going to use an Esum S31 brush we're going into the lightest chroma shade right here and with a brush it's a little bit more flaky as opposed to getting the full opacity but it's fine we don't need anything crazy down here and we'll get the middle shade and that's that for the look I'm gonna go ahead and finish everything and then I'll give you my final thoughts and also some swatch comparisons with other palettes. So here is the final look with liner and lashes. Overall, I'm gonna say that this Obsessions palette is definitely a success. Most of the time I'm pretty lukewarm about the palettes. I find that there's usually one or two dud shades in every Obsessions palette that I try. No dud in here. My only critiques are that a few of the sh orange shades, they just look kind of similar on the eyelid. but. On Honestly, I can get over that because of how good quality this palette is overall. So if you're interested in this color story, I do recommend it because the quality is really nice. This is definitely one of Huda Beauty's best Obsessions palettes. So it's a great price, definitely worth it. Now, here's the catch though. Purple and orange is a very popular color story within the Huda Beauty line. So I did want to do a few comparisons with you. Now actually, in the most recent Huda Beauty launch before this one, it was the color block palettes and she actually already came out with an orange purple palette in that one obviously they're quite different I think the orange shade would pull similar and maybe the shimmers but the color block shade is definitely a lot brighter but I did just want to note that's how common orange and purple palettes are with her she already came out with this one but let's take a look at the other ones which I think are a little bit more dupable so I actually picked the wild obsessions palette that I thought was the most similar this is the chameleon palette this is fairly new and you can see purple and orange color story these two are very very similar the chameleon palette has some golden shades that the love fest palette doesn't have but let me show you the side by side comparisons this side of my hand is the love fest palette and this is the wild chameleon palette I mean come on these are really really close I couldn't really find super dupes for the shimmer shades in the palette but the mattes are pretty much identical overall if you're more into the mattes of the love fest palette and you have the wild chameleon you do not need the love fest palette these are pretty darn close I don't think you need both <laughs> I have a couple big palettes to compare to the love fest so the first one is the desert dusk palette I mean the love fest literally looks like a shrunk down version of the Desert Dusk palette. Obviously the Desert Dusk also has a lot of lighter tones that I felt like the Love Fest was missing, but here's here's a side by side. <laughs> this is Love Fest over here and then this is Desert Dusk. The Desert Dusk honestly has some really close shimmers, not dupes, but close. The only matte I couldn't find a dupe for was this one from the Love Fest, but other than that dark matte, I would say that these palettes are very, very, very close to one another. So if you have Desert Dusk, it will be repetitive to have Love Fest. But Desert Dusk is an older palette. I believe it's no longer able to be sold, but yeah, they're very close. And the final palette that I wanted to compare was the Naughty Nudes. I felt like maybe the Naughty Nude had some dupes and was pretty close, but let's take a closer look. I would say of the palettes that I mentioned, the Naughty Nudes is the least similar, but it's still pretty darn similar. So Love Fest, Naughty Nudes, I would say the Naughty Nudes had the most similar shimmers of all of the palettes, but the least similar mattes. There's just not as much orange in Naughty Nudes, but the purpley shades are quite similar. So it's just missing the oranges, but again, pretty darn close all right guys so there we have it that's my review of the love fest palette overall to sum it up i think this is a really great quality obsessions palette so if you're interested in getting one of her nine panners this is great but do keep in mind it's not an original color story in her collection if you have wild chameleon naughty nudes or desert dust you have a very similar color story from huda beauty but if that's not the case with you or you want a travel size version of those color stories 
This one will not disappoint you. It is great, great quality. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Let me know your thoughts of this palette down below if you picked it up. And if you got the cream blushes, can you also let me know? Do I need to pick those up? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for liking it and being subscribed to my channel. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.